Thank you, Sharon, your blessing to us. And how great is our God? You know, well, there's no words that can express really how great he is, but let's pray and ask the Lord to anoint this message, this um, the rest of the service, and uh, 
to bring about his will and purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we do thank you for your mercies, your grace, your goodness today. And we thank you, Lord, take us in a way that you would have us go with the message that we might minister, I might minister now to the hearts and minds of your people, the word that they need to hear, which we all need to hear. And I just thank you for this opportunity on Zoom to reach people from other places, countries, uh, through this medium. We give you praise for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. As you might see, the, the view has changed because I've moved upstairs into a, an office just for the media. And um, let's believe that it's going to go nice and smooth. Anyway, I have a message that I'd like to bring forth today. And it's very similar maybe to last week. Um, it's all to do with basically the mind, the thoughts uh, of our heart, the imaginations. And uh, we mentioned about Job, we touched on Job. And uh, the secret of the book of Job, when you read it, the main secret was that he said, the thing that I feared most has come upon me. And um, that's a lesson that God wanted to teach us right from the beginning, because that's the very first book written in the Bible, the book of Job. So the thing that he feared most came upon him. And most probably what was all taking place in his thought life. You know, we, we're, we're thinking constantly. It's very hard not to think. Um, of course, there's certain religions that try to get you to stop thinking and have a total blank mind, but that's not the way the mind works. And if you have a blank mind, you pick up a spirit very quickly that will take place in that vacant mind of yours. So we don't want to have a blank mind or a vacant mind. We just want to have the mind of Christ. And thoughts should be continuous. You're continually thinking the thoughts of God. And you don't want to go vacant. You know, if you are a vacant mind, a blank mind, then another spirit will take over and uh, cause you major problems. Of course, that's Hinduism. You know, that's yoga and things like that, which we want to avoid. Um, so thoughts, there's great value of thought. The, the true value of thoughts is that you can, through a constant stream of thinking the good things of God, um, bring forth good deeds. So it begins in your thought life and it ends up in the world of matter, uh, the world that we live in. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So our thoughts have to be lined up with, with God's thoughts. And then we uh, have a, a mind that's heavenly minded. We're heavenly minded. And if you're heavenly minded on a continual basis, you will bring into your world peace and harmony and uh, things of that nature. Um, so it's very important to know the true value of thoughts. I believe that we, we know the true value of words. We're very word conscious minded about speaking, you know, and uh, we, we want to make sure that we're not speaking things into existence that are contrary to sound living. But everything begins in the thought life when you think about it. <laughs> when you think about it, we're thinking all the time. And so God wants us to uh, have a mind that is filled with his thoughts or his ways. You know, he said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are much higher than your thoughts. And um, that is true. Our, our ways are inconsistent with his. And I think that uh, we have in the past tried to get God to look upon our ways and our thoughts and to give us what we want through our imagination, our thought life. But it doesn't work that way with God. God wants you to basically 
give up your ways and your thoughts and pick up his thoughts and his ways. So that's the, uh, the challenge we have, are faced with. It's, and of course, that, that then causes a renewal going on in us, especially in our thought life. It's called the renewing of the mind. So we have a, a carnal mind to begin with, and we should end up hopefully with a spiritual mind, the mind of Christ. And that's to be learnt. It's a training. We have to train ourselves to think in line with God's word. Um, I think that there's a place you come to where suddenly you're more aware of your thought life than you were before. Um, maybe it's a time that everyone comes to. Maybe it's later in life. Maybe it's earlier in life, which would be better. But um, I think there's a certain time when you become very aware of what you're thinking. It's happening to me, I know, that's why I'm sharing it. I've become so mindful of the thoughts that I'm thinking. And during the course of the day, especially when I go on my walk with, 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 with the dog, walking with God, uh, I'm thinking things and I'm saying to myself, why am I thinking these things? I've got to capture these thoughts because they keep coming, you know, <laughs> it's this stupid stuff, you know, it's just like chat, chatter. You're thinking things and you think, well, why am I thinking? I said, I'm catching my thoughts more than ever before. In other words, I'm saying, perish that thought, perish that thought, because that thought is not in line with godly living. Not that they're weirdo thoughts, but just the thought of, um, you know, maybe someone bumped into you and you, you, in your thought life, you thought maybe you should give them a tail wagging or whatever. And just suddenly you realize that's not consistent with Christian living. You know, so I say perish that thought. I'm keeping, I'm taking that thought captive now. I don't want that thought to be in my, in my mind because I know the true value of thoughts that are in line with God's word. And of course, God, Thoughts are filled with joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, etc. And it's our kindness towards others, which is um, a, a powerful thought. So we have a thought that's powerful as well. In fact, the deed is just as powerful as the thought, and the thought is just as powerful as the deed. So if you're thinking kind thoughts, about somebody, there should be, or could be, or maybe won't be, but it should suddenly come forth with a phone call or a good word or a card or, or a gift because you're, you're kindly, your kind thoughts about someone. You know, I've, I've changed the way I, I deal with, with people. Uh, more and more, I just talk to God and say, God, put me on their heart, put so-and-so on, put me on so-and-so's heart and let them have kind thoughts towards me. And I find that that's the way it works, better than trying to get someone to come on board with your, your plan or purpose or whatever. Just ask God to put in their mind thoughts about you that are kind. And then the deed will come forth, the good deed. So there's value, true value in, in thinking good thoughts. And it should be a stream. It should be a constant stream because you never really are going to stop thinking. But ask God to make you aware of your thoughts. Become aware, recognition of what you are thinking about. And if it's inconsistent with the word of God, stop it. You can just capture it or say, perish that thought, perish that thought. Now, if you don't capture it or if you don't say perish that thought, that thought becomes uh, bigger and grander and is magnified in your mind. It's called imaginations. And that's where fear is bred, that fear is breeding in those imaginations. And at night, you know, when you go to bed, that's when usually the, the imaginations come forth. Your screen's down. There you go. That's where it comes forth, the imaginations. And they usually uh, come about when, when you are sleeping at night. Your mind is filled with thoughts. 
but it's capturing them, saying, perish these thoughts. I will not have these thoughts continuing in my thinking. I've got to change the thoughts in line with God's word. And, you know, God sent his thoughts towards us are kindly. He has kind thoughts towards us, and uh, his thoughts towards us are peace and prosperity, and he, and, and he intends that we have a good end to our life. That's how he thinks. Uh, I'm glad he thinks that way. I'm glad God is who he is. God is good. That's why we call him a good God. That's why we say good morning. That means good morning starts with a good God and having you in mind. And you cherish that. And so our, our imagination is our field of dreams. There was a movie a long time ago, I think it was about 1989 or so, Kevin Costner was the lead actor, called Field of Dreams. If you haven't seen it, I would suggest you actually look at that. It's a good film. It's a good film. It's about baseball, but it's not really about baseball. You know, the Americans love their baseball, and I think in today's world, a lot of fans of baseball look back to the old days, and they have kind thoughts about baseball. It, it, it speaks to them of a world that they used to have. You know? um, of course, we're all thinking that we're going to go back to normal. We're not going to go back to normal. After this plague, you know, we're still going to have to be on our toes and see what else is around the corner, but it's not going to go back to normal. We don't want to go back to normal anyway. We're going onward, Christian soldiers. Uh, onward. It's, it's a time, I think, also to stop being defensive and being more offensive. We've got to realize that we are warriors. We are soldiers of the Lord, and we've got a job to do. So, you know, being in a defensive mode all the time is I don't think God wants us to be that way. I think he wants us to get our sword out and let's go, let's, let's, let's take on board and, and let's see the, uh, the soldiers of the law, the overcomers, the ambassadors of Christ going onward, forward and taking territory and possessing uh, the land. And uh, this is what I believe God is wanting us to do more than just being, you know, laid back and frightened and wondering what's going to happen next. You know. Of course, we can keep looking up. That's good. Looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, especially today, because he's coming soon. And um, I believe the time is short. And I believe that a lot of things are going to take place that would astound you astound you yeah, until, until you see it now in our world that we're in. This is a time of, of I believe, great grace, where sin abounds, grace does more abound. And not only great grace, but I believe great uh, opportunities to see the great God in operation through you and through me. So present your body a living sacrifice. That's what Paul said. Uh, get used to doing that. Uh, I, I don't think you could. There's certain things you just can't not get uh, used to. I mean, you just got to keep doing it. Like saying the Lord's Prayer. I say it at least twice a day. Uh, because that's all summed up in a very few words. And that came from God himself. Jesus Christ gave that to the disciples. You know, so we don't need long wordy prayers. Just say the Lord's Prayer. And then present your body, like Paul said, a living sacrifice. When you get up in the morning, just say, these are your feet, Lord, this is your legs, and here I am, it's all yours, you're mine. Uh, present your body a living sacrifice. He doesn't want you dead. He's not looking for a, a dead soldier. He wants you alive and well, and um, open to opportunities. And uh, in this field of dreams, it's our imagination. In the Hollywood movie, it was Kevin Costner in a field of, uh, of corn. He had this massive big ranch, I think it was. And um, he, he heard a voice. And the voice said, if you build it, he'll come. What's to do with baseball? So it was about his father and the relationship he had with his father or didn't have. And um, he was living in regrets because... The last time he saw his father, he had a big argument. 
And um, he always resented the fact or regretted the fact that he's now a very successful baseball player. Um, and his father, you know, he's gone now and he can't, he can't get over the fact that he never did uh, say sorry, etc. It's, it's a wonderful movie. I mean, everyone will get something out of it called Field of Dreams. But he heard that voice say, build, build that baseball field. And he actually didn't even say baseball field. He just said, like, he knew what, what the voice was meaning. He said, build it and he'll come. It means his father will come. Back to, to give an opportunity for him to forgive him and, and, and get back the relationship with his father. Field of dreams. Well, our field of dreams is our imagination. You know, it's 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 there we build, and uh, when we build it, they will come. Whatever it is, we're all individuals. We all have different talents and gifts that God has given us. Everyone's received something from God. So in your imagination, you start to build your field of dreams. For the movie, it was a, a full-on Olympic-sized baseball uh, field. And then the players came. They turned up. It's a lovely story. But you have a story, and I have a story. And so building your mind, your imagination, I suppose what basically it means is this, that dreamers, dreamers are people who are actually building things in their mind. Now, of course, you can be a dreamer, but you could be living outside of the will of God. So that's not all that good. But if you are a dreamer and, and then you have the Christ in you, you're born again, spirit filled, and, and, and you love to dream, that's value there. You know, some people say, oh, he's just lying on the couch dreaming. But basically, you're building something in your imagination. You're building. And if you heard the voice of the Lord speak to you, well, you build on that foundation. Because Jesus is the word. He is the chief cornerstone. And we're both supposed to build our lives on the apostles' um, teachings and, and Jesus, the chief cornerstone. So we build upon that, that field, that platform, all the thoughts that come to us. Now, if you are an unbeliever, in other words, you don't know Jesus, you don't know Christ, you don't know the Spirit, you still have a mind and you still have an imagination. But you wouldn't be building things that would end up being good deeds. It, it, because it's from the carnal mind. So every thought is as powerful as the deed itself. Every thought. Um, I like Ephesians 3.20. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or even think according to the power that is in us. Well, that power, of course, is Christ, is in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Well, we are the church. And uh, uh, the church is triumphant. And the church is going to be increasing. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Uh, even Bill Gates, they'll not prevail. Uh, because the church has been given a mandate and God in his mind has dreamt about us. He's seen us. He's seen the end of us. He knows the end from the beginning. And so that means we're in good shape. So even though the world is sending messages through radio, television, social media, um, and they are talking uh, contrary to what the will of God is, because they don't know what the will of God is, because they've never yet been born again of the Spirit. And so that's why they say things like they do, the end of the world, but the Bible says it's world without end. Now, who's going to win on this, uh, this one? Well, I believe God will. He's never failed yet. He never will fail. He knows the end from the beginning. 
He knows what you're here for, what he's called you to do. He's gifted you. He's graced you. And uh, where there's great sin abounding, there's great grace abounding. And Noah found grace in the sight of God. He's about to, to destroy the whole earth because the thoughts of men were always wicked in those days, the days of Noah. Men's thoughts were against God, against his ways. And, and Paul said that too. He said that um, because mankind did not hold God's thoughts in their mind. He gave them over to a reprobate mind right from the beginning. Men knew God right from the beginning. Bible said men knew God, but they didn't retain him in their thought life. And so because they didn't retain him in their thoughts, God gave them over ultimately to a reprobate mind. And so with that mind of being a reprobate, you end up worshipping birds and dogs and sun and stars and all types of gods that you worship. It's called idolatry. And uh, if you worship these other gods, these things, through a reprobate mind, you're building for yourself a very sorrowful end. But if you, through the word of God, the mind of Christ, start to build in your field of dreams, in your imaginations, a consciousness that holds God as supreme. God is good. Uh, he's the all in all. Then you will come out with a good result. See, the spirit of consciousness, the spirit of the consciousness of the goodness of God, it will bring about good deeds. It's just the way it is. I think last time we spoke, last week, it, it was similar in the way that you held things uh, in mind and you spoke things that you would get results according to what you have good. And if it's evil, it works the same way. In other words, fear is the evil one and, and faith is the good one. And if you have faith, then you produce good works. If you have fear, you produce evil works. It works the same way. Well, the same with the thought life, it works the same. It's, a, it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Or you have the, the carnal mind. It's not the spirit, it's the mind. Carnal mind. And with the carnal mind, you come up with um, bad results. But with the spirit mind, that's, that's a big difference when you have the spirit mind. If your thoughts are kind towards someone, then the deed will follow suit. Keep in mind that thought is the consciousness of the total will. Keep that in mind, that your thought is the consciousness of the total will you have towards the will of God. It's all in consciousness. And so the spirit consciousness, because you have the mind that is spiritual, is, is able to bring about the supply that you need. In fact, it's the source of all supply. So the spirit of consciousness that you have about the goodness of God, magnitude of God and you're keeping that in mind it's, it's the source of all supply because God gives you things based upon the things you need and if you need the things that are bound with the will of God coming forth in your life God adds the things you need that's why the word says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now that is scripture, that is the word of God, it's set in stone. But the carnal mind is not able to grasp that because the carnal mind is, is based upon doing and works and being busy and active. 
But the mind of Christ is, is different. It's about being settled. It's about being quiet. It's about being still, knowing that the battle's not yours, it's the Lord. So it's a different, total different opposite way of thinking or, or having in your imagination what you desire to see. So with this spirit of consciousness versus the um, old mind, which is not spirit, it's carnal. One is spirit, one is carnal. Carnal mind, spirit mind. And God is wanting us to have a mind renewed, being the spirit of your mind. So it's all spirit for us who are born again believers filled with the Holy Ghost. We have to have a spiritual mind. You can't operate in that old mind anymore. Well, you don't want to. I'm sure you don't. I don't. And so you capture your thoughts. They're not consistent with God's will. Because I believe, like me, you want the will of God to manifest in your life. At the end of your training here on earth you want to see good results you want to see something coming forth that you can say this is what god did in and through me and it's greater than i could ever imagine god can even do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you can even think think about it. you can just take it to another level so you build your your field of dreams in your imagination and you 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 dream you know, you dream. Uh, that's why I said one time that I used to drive convertibles mostly because I, I didn't want to have a top. You know, I wanted to be, I want to be limitless in my thinking. I don't want to be, don't want a ceiling above me as I'm driving. Well, that's just me. That was my thoughts. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> you don't have to have a convertible, but. You've got to have a, you've got to get rid of these ceilings because with God, there is no ceiling. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you can even think or ask. So build your, your field of dreams. Uh, and if you want to watch that movie, I would, I would say do it. It's a very good movie. You'll get a lot out of it. That's Hollywood. But you know, even in Hollywood, they come up with some good things down again. Um, I was speaking to somebody yesterday, in fact, about what I had in consciousness, the, the voice that I heard. You know, the voice in the field of dreams was, if you build it, they'll come. You know, when I had a, a voice, I've heard things. And I'm building that in my imagination. I'm seeing it. I'm expressing it through my words. But you can't share it with everybody. You've got to realize that. You've got to be very selective who you share your imaginations or your dreams with because most people will most probably try to come against your dream. So be very careful. You know, you and God, you know, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. You and God, you talk to God, you walk with God, and you can dream with God. And God's not threatened if you come up with something that is fanciful or weird. A lot of things that start off weird end up being a great blessing to many people, to humanity. When people have dreams. Have a dream. Be a dreamer. Don't be always fussing and striving in your thought life to bring about something. Just dream it up. Dream it up. And uh, it, it, it takes on a, a life of its own. And, and you begin to believe it. You begin to see it. See, in the world, they always tell you, you know, you, you've got to believe in yourself. You know, if, if you're not doing very good, say you're on a program, you know, X Factor, I see it a lot. You know, these people come up, they're singers, and then the Simon will stop them and say, you know, now you, you do, you've got a good voice, but you've got to really start believing in yourself. See, there's a truth there, but we don't want to go that way. I don't want to believe in myself. I want to believe in himself who is in me. But in the world, the carnal mind versus the spirit mind, they'll say, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself because there is a truth there. You've got to have your 
come with confidence, but our confidence is not in ourselves, it's in him. My confidence is in the Lord who is in me, who is bringing forth, I believe, the dreams that I'm dreaming. So we are different. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So if you haven't got something being built in you, a field of dreams, ask God. Ask God for a word. Call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And once you get a, a, a word, a voice coming to you from out of the blue, from the heavens, God is speaking today. He's speaking more today than I think ever before. He's going to be speaking to people all over the world. His people. His people. And he'll tell you things about yourself. He, he will tell you things that he wants you to do. But it's, it's from him. If it's from him, then no matter how outlandish it appears, God's able to bring it to pass. God is able. So, yeah, believe in yourself. That's fine. But rather believe in him who is in you, who is your life. Because remember, you died. He lives now his life in you. You presented your body a living sacrifice. And at uh, Calvary, where he died, you died. There's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's Paul saying that. Well, I'm saying that. You, you say that. So get the, the germ, as it were, the, the seed, as it were, the, uh, the beginnings, as it were, of, of something that you can build in your imagination. And you can dream it big. You can dream it big. Big, God is not going to be threatened by your dreams. But if you share with people, they might be threatened by your dreams. And they might want to kill your dream. They might want to dampen you down. But don't, don't, don't let people do that. Get, get away from human thought and think the thoughts that come from God. And every Bible story, you'll find yourself in one of those stories anyway one day. One day you could be a Job, next you could be a, a Joseph, you could, you, could, you could be a David. I mean, all these stories, there's a truth in these Bible stories. And dreamers, a lot of them were dreamers, the prophets, my goodness, the old prophets of the old days, the things that they came up with, shocking to the human mind. But God looks over his word to perform it, and his thoughts are, are, are with the righteous. His thoughts are with us because we're the righteousness of God in Christ. And so dream big, dream. Dream thoughts. But once you get it, the voice from him, you're safe. You're safe to dream these thoughts. You see, the thing is, with the worldly ways, and again, Christians can be worldly. They can be born again, saved. You have the spirit, but their mind is not renewed. It's not a spiritual mind. So it's not the spirit of the consciousness. It's, it's still the old, the old thoughts, the carnal thoughts. But God wants you to think godly thoughts in line with his word. And so when you get it from him, then it's not your desire, it's his desire. See, what things so you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it, you shall have it. That's to the Christ in you. It's not to you with the carnal mind or someone that just wants to get something from God and do go ahead and do things for God. It's not that. It's to the Christ in you. Christ in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So these dreams that come to you, these desires, these are godly desires, and you build on that. And that gives it substance and where you're treasure is, your heart will be also. And so out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your mouth, the words you speak, the thoughts you think from your heart, these are from God. These are good. These are very, very good. And then you do speak it, then the words become very important. But there's a certain time for everything. You've got to be... Uh, processed by the spirit within to get you to the point in time or that place 
where suddenly he releases you. It's called the Lord's release. And he hasn't released you because you're not ready yet. I'm not ready until God releases me. And I know when he releases me. And you'll know when he releases you. Until that time, you, 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 he builds a fence around you to protect you. As you build your field of dreams in your imagination, he protects you. And then there's a point where he releases you. And that's where you've got to obey. You know, you've got to hear and you've got to do it. Ultimately, you've got to do that thing. So he's building your field of dreams in your imagination and never, ever expressing it, going and doing it. But you've got to wait for the timing. It's very important. Timing is one of the most important things when it comes to doing something or bringing about something that you heard God speak to you about. It's all in the timing. When you hit that timeline and the, the release comes, you do it. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, Christians don't mind sacrificing, but when it comes to doing what God told them to do, that's a different story. And so if you're disobedient, you won't be pleasing to God. You hear and you obey. You hear and you do. And until you hear, you should wait on the Lord for a word, a word, an inspired word, just something that comes out of nowhere, it seems. And then you dream that. That's why I like to sit on the couch and lie back and think about God, godly thoughts. And things come to me. And then I can take those thoughts, put them to a test. You've got to test everything. You've got to test the spirit that's moving. You've got to test it. And so the way you test it is you wait for uh, two or three witnesses to confirm that which you believe you receive from God. So they safeguards all the way through. We're not sort of loose cannons, just busy for God and going out there. No, we test things and we think about things and we critique things in our thought mind, our mind, our thinking, our processes. It's good. And you can't offend God if you're thinking godly thoughts. You can't offend God. And there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. You In Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. Because you, 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 you're testing, you know, you're growing. Everything has to be tested. In, in, in the natural, everything's tested. Before they put it on the market, they test that thing over and over and over again. Make sure it works. So you're being tested. God tests us to see if we're going to be faithful. Uh, with, with the little things he gives us, and if we're faithful with the little things, he gives us bigger things. And grander things. But obedience is the key, isn't it? It's obedience of faith. And so you hear and you obey. Uh, people that would rather sacrifice than obey what they heard. They'd rather sacrifice something. But God's obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what God says. Hear God and do it. So he's building in you something great, something good. He's building in each and every one of us. We're all unique. What God's doing with me is not doing with you. But I have my dreams. I have my uh, end result in mind. And you know, I'm getting getting older now. I mean, uh, but I, I read Caleb, the story of Caleb and Joshua. And that encourages me. See, that's a Bible story. I see Caleb, he came back with the 12 spies, him and Joshua were two of the, tw the, of the 12. The 10 gave bad reports, but Caleb and Joshua, they gave good reports. And then eventually Gosha, Gosha, uh, Caleb said to God, give me one more mountain, God. And he was 80. He was 80, one more mountain. Well, I'm seeing that story more and more in my own life. I'm getting close to 80. I'm saying, God, give me one more mountain. You know, it's not over yet. It's not over till it's over. And uh, God is able to take the weaker things. As you get older, you get weaker. You know, you're not like you used to be when you're 30. You've got your aches and your pains or whatever. But God can take that weakness 
and through it, his strength comes forth. That's how it works. That's why when you're weak, you're strong. You keep these thoughts in mind, constantly thinking in line with God's thoughts. So your desires really are his desires. His desires are your desires. His plans are your plans. Your plans are his plans. Jesus said, my father and I, we're one. And he wants us to be one with the Father and the Son. So our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. And so we talk to the Father and we talk to the Son. We fellowship. And we have thoughts, meaningful thoughts. We talk to God and he talks to us. And you're building something in your imagination. Yes, you're dreaming. You're a dreamer. Well, I suppose I've been a bit of a dreamer all my life. But some people just don't have any imagination whatsoever. They just want to do it according to tradition. No, just be different. Be different. Think good thoughts, God, godly thoughts. Anyway, entertainment, for instance. See that, that movie? If you watch that movie, Field of Dreams, you'll get something out of it. But it's Hollywood, it's entertainment. But some people think that entertainment is bad and evil. You know, I'll end with this. When, when I was living in Los Angeles, you know, I'd left England for certain reasons. And uh, I just arrived one day in LA. I was 33 years of age, got saved at the end of, of my 33rd year. And, and I was just me, arriving in LA, didn't know anybody. Remember, this is 19, 1973. I left when I was 1971. I mean, there's no social media, you know, no Wi-Fi, etc. I didn't know anybody. I left because I was under 24-hour police observation. They told me that I was, they were going to get me. So I thought I'd just leave town, and I did. And I arrived in LA, didn't know anybody coming out of Soho, darkness, vice, gambling, all the things that I was involved in as a young, young fool, young man. And here I was with two suitcases. And um, then knowing now that I was in the will of God, I didn't know that God was getting me out of that darkness to bring me into the sunshine in LA. And so I remember, getting off the plane and just walking towards the uh, entrance, you know, the passport office, and I met a couple of people. And they said, oh, where are you from? I said, London. I said, oh, really? He said, uh, where are you going? I said, just LA. <laughs> I've never been there uh, before. And he said, well, how are you going to get there? You can take a cab. He said, if, if you like, we'll give you a lift. I said, oh, great. So I'm, for, straight away, I had a lift. You know, God's looking after you. He's looked after me all these years. Isn't that keeping power of God? I should have been dead by now, 20, 30 years ago, or in jail. But God is good. God is good. Well, 40 years ago, <laughs> not 20 years ago, I was preaching. Uh, I should have been dead 50 years ago. But God has got a plan. He's got a vision for me. He's got one for you. I remember getting off the plane, going into you know, Sunset Boulevard, that's all I knew, Sunset Boulevard, checked into a hotel. Then I checked into another motel across the road later because I was on a longer stay. I was supposed to be there, I think, nine days. I ended up there nine years. But God was working in this situation. Um, and out of that, there's so many stories and things that happened to me and it's, it's, it's quite astounding really how I got through it all. But I just stepped out, just went out, you know, didn't know anybody. But I ended up knowing a whole bunch of people in the end. But I had this, 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 this mind that I came with. Uh, God's got to get rid of that mind because he's going to do something with me. So I remember, uh, Talking about entertainment, I remember I was, I, was, I was living on King's Road, not, not King's Road in London, but King's Road in, uh, in LA, in Hollywood. And I had this flat. And um, I was watching TV, you know, watching TV. 
and I watched this one movie and it was like, you know, Lassie or one of those things. And I got really touched by it. So I started watching all these movies and I was watching movie after movie. Hollywood, Hollywood was, was getting to me. And, but there was all soppy movies, you know, about dogs and children and, and things like that. Things I would never, ever watch. But something was happening to me. I noticed that I was getting soft on the inside. I was getting, you know, the tears. I mean, I never did that. I never did that. I didn't cry. And then to one point, I even said to myself, Bassett, you got to stop this. And I slapped myself in the face. Stop this. It's a hard world out there. You can't be thinking these type of thoughts. You, you can't get your this emotional world. So I was pretty hard in character by now. I lived for a decade amongst criminals. You know, I, I had a mind that was hardened, but God used the entertainment, Hollywood, to soften my heart. See, that's why people quite don't understand certain things about me or you. You know, I sing certain songs that are secular songs because I knew that it, these things, uh, natural things of men, can be used by God. God will use anything, anything, to bring about his purposes. I, I wasn't going to go to church and get my heart softened. I'd never been in a church. I never knew anything to do with religion or anything else. And I wasn't interested, but this softened me. Now, after weeks of this happening to me, I was going out the door and I thought, oh, I've got to kill a bit of uh, a bit earlier. I'll just surf the, uh, the TV. And I came across a show called Amazing Prophecies by a preacher called Doug Clark. I caught my attention. And then he started talking about things that I could identify with. And I remember him teaching, uh, teaching about Psalms 22. And he said, you know, in Psalms 22, he said, there's so many occurrences that have been fulfilled by Jesus when he died on the cross. And he said, yeah, it's amazing. He was saying, the preacher was saying, he was saying, it wasn't like a hundred to one shot because so many prophecies came to pass. It wasn't a thousand to one. Now, when he's talking thousand to one, hundred to one, he's, he's gambling to, I was a gambler. I had my gambling gloves. I mean, now I, he got my attention. I got very, oh, really? It wasn't a thousand to one. He said, no, it's, it's, it's not even a million to one shot. It, it, because of the law of probability, it's, it's, it's dead certain that the last prophecy will come to pass. I went, oh, wow, get my attention, really? I mean, this is a... Uh, is that there's not even any odds here. It's dead, dead sir, that Jesus is coming back to the earth. Jesus is coming back physically. Now, he is in us. You know, this is the incarnation, really, of Christ in you, Christ in me. But Jesus physically will come back. And all the eyes will see him. And he said, make sure that you are not a, 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 a sinner. Make sure that you are saved. Make sure that you have uh, been forgiven by God. He said, sinner. I thought, well, that's me. I'm, I know I'm a sinner. He said, well, if you say this prayer, the sinner's prayer, uh, you, you will be ready for the coming of the Lord. You'll be saved. Guess what? I said it. He said, get down your knees and say this. I was down there, I was there saying the prayer. I got saved through entertainment from Hollywood. That's why when I sing certain songs and people say, oh, you, you sing secular songs. You know, I wasn't singing secular. I hear something that gives me some real goosebumps. I know that these are love songs. And where they come from anyway? Everything good comes from God. And so I'd sing certain songs. I would say in a way that the world could understand. You know, you're not going to save the world if you're so rigid with your traditions of men, the way, you, the way it should be. I think even Wesley in the old days used to go in the pubs and sing bar songs because they all understood it. They need to preach the gospel. They've got to be a bit more in faith that God can use anything and anyone. So that thing that you're building in your mind, that field of dreams, that, that word that you had, you're building it, is going to come forth one day at the time of release. 
and it's going to affect people for good. And I believe bring a lot of people into the kingdom because of your testimony. See, your testimony is what gets people's attention. And they overcame the devil by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. So you have a testimony. So dream, dream. Let your dreams get bigger and bigger. Knowing that it started first from him through a word given to you or an inspirational thought. Then build upon that. Build upon that. Well, there's many things I could say, but I just don't like always going on. I've said what I had to say. But um, I wrote a few things down here. When we begin to understand that the field of dreams is for our imagination, is for us, is our imagination, then we will begin to sow there our precious seeds of wisdom and knowledge of his will. One guy called James Allen, I'll, 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 I'll quote what he said. He said, the greatest achievement was at first and for a time a dream. Oak sleeps in the acorn. The bird waits in the egg. And in the highest vision of the soul, a waking angel stirs. Dreams are the seedlings of reality. Isn't that great? Dreams are the seedlings of realities. A guy called James Allen. Well, we're learning to cast down evil imaginations and learning the mind of Christ. That's what we're here to do. Which sows thoughts consistent with the Father's will. And what is the Father's will? That which is good, acceptable, and perfect. That's why we present our body. And we, we, uh, we prove what the will of God in our own lives. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Well, anyway, God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on board. Um, there's a lot more in this area, but be a dreamer. I'll say, oh, <laughs> I'll share this with you. You know, in today's world, you know, you have things like autism and ADD and all these technical things. We never had that on the days I grew up. I mean, everyone was the same and the, and they never thought that maybe you were um, backward in a sense because you've got some sort of thing that they call it. You know, everyone just gets on with it. You know, I mean, you just got on with it. But I remember I was always getting in trouble. And, and now looking back and then looking forward, most probably they could diagnose me now as being autistic or whatever <laughs> you know, on, the, on the spectrum. You know, but a lot of autistic people have, have great abilities, you know, great abilities, because they don't have it in one area, they have it in another area. And I remember I, I, I got kicked out of, you know, I wanted to go to the Boy Scouts, but they kicked me out of the brown, into the brownies first, you go to the brownies, then you get, I got kicked out of the browns. I got kicked out of most things. I got kicked out of school. Two schools I got kicked out. I was called the vilest boy in the whole school. Slapped on the face in front of 600 boys. Well, that didn't go down well with my subconscious. Um, but I was always sort of getting in trouble. I remember once I was um, in the cricket team. You know, I wasn't a very good sportsman, but I was in the cricket team. And I remember I was fielding. I was a fielder. And uh, they're playing a very serious game of cricket with the opposing team school. It's important that we won. And uh, here I was in my field of dreams, and I was just singing a song to myself, looking up. The very first record I bought it was called Singing the Blues. I never felt more like a singing the blues, because I'll never be. Da -da 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 -da. And I was singing this, singing the blues, and I hearing this noise around me, shouting and everything. And I realized they're all looking at me. And before my very eyes, the ball came in front of me and fell right between my feet. And oh my 
goodness, I'm singing the blues. I'm, I'm, my mind is not in the game. I'm singing a song and the ball was right at my feet and the, oh, everyone hated me. I lost the game. I couldn't, we could have won the game. So I got kicked off the cricket team. Then I got kicked off the, uh, uh, my new school. Uh, they, they, in fact, I got expelled the first day of my new school. They found out my reputation from the previous school. They, they, they got rid of me. My dad had to go and bend a knee and plead. So they brought me back for a trial. But I was always dreaming. I was at the back of the class. I just couldn't, I really couldn't learn. I didn't learn my job. Um, so I suppose I maybe was autistic. I didn't know, we didn't, didn't know these things. But I was always dreaming. I was always thinking about things. Not a good thing, because I wasn't safe. But I had big dreams about taking on the world. I to take on the world. Anyway, you can be a dreamer now if you fill with the Holy Ghost. You can dream big dreams. And it's safe. Because God looks over his word to perform it. And it all begins in your imagination, in your mind. To be a dreamer. The world understands that. But they don't have the spirit of goodness in them, the spirit of Christ in them. But if you are watching this, I'm sure you are a believer. If you don't know Jesus and you're watching this, well, I'll say the same thing to you. Jesus is coming soon. I mean, we're in the end of days. It's not the end of the world. That'll, that'll continue forever and ever and ever. Be a new, new world, a new earth, a new heaven. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in serious danger right now because it's the end. We're at 12 o'clock. The Lord is coming back. And he's coming back for his own to take us out because then judgment's going to fall on the world. Judgment like the world's never seen. As in the days of Noah. And of course, in the days of Noah, the judgment fell. Only eight souls came out alive because Noah found grace with God. He pleased God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, please, I beg of you, ask God if he has a son. Say, I'm going to the most high, the most high God, because he might be in some of the religion. I'm going to the right, I'm going to the most high. Tell me, is Jesus Christ the son of God? And you know what? I believe God will answer you. Call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Maybe you do not know Jesus. You don't know about salvation is by grace through faith, not of works. And every religion, apart from Christianity, is all based on works. It's all about doing. Doing for your God or God's. And, and, and you're dying your sins. You're dying your sins. When I heard that, I was on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus. Well, maybe this is softening your heart a bit. You've got to be softened in your heart. Seed can't go into the soil of your heart or in the seed of, you know, or in the field of your dreams. If the earth is hard, your heart is hard. Anyway, God bless you. I pray for everybody who hears or sees this message to be blessed, to be healed, be a dreamer. God bless you. Until next time, amen and amen. Tell people about Victory the Live Church, Live in Christ. Zoom every Sunday at 11 a.m. GMT time. With that, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>
our day will come If we just wait a while No tears for us Think love and wear a smile Our dreams of music Because we'll always stay in love this way Our day will come Because we'll always stay in love 